it's Thursday. My no-so guide isn't ready, so here's a tiny skull. It's pretty close to no-so, and they take less than an hour to make, so I feel like it's a pretty good candidate for any upcoming Halloween markets you might have on your schedule. Speaking of which, I do get this question a lot, and I just wanted to let you all know that you are more than welcome to sell anything you make from any of my patterns. Just credit Complicated Knots as the designer where appropriate. Now, in other news, I have launched the second chance vote over on Patreon, but they staged a little bit of a coup. They're in cahoots. And they voted for Pangolin instead. So it's looking like we'll be getting a Pangolin and probably a squirrel from that sometime in July. Now, a written version of today's pattern will be provided to my patrons and will also be made available in my Etsy store. And for anyone who's interested, I will leave links to both in the description down below. I am a little bit behind in my paperwork right now, but I am expecting to get both this one and the panda one done over this weekend if they're not up before then. All right, let's talk about tools and materials. For today's project, you're going to need 8-ply, 100% acrylic yarn, also known as DK, in two main colours. You're going to need a colour for your skull and a colour for behind the eyes and nose. You're also going to need your 3.5mm hook, scissors, pins and needles, and some stuffing. But that's it. Okay, so this project is like the epitome of trusting the process. The skull itself is assembled all in one piece, but we're actually going to start with this little patch that goes behind the eyes. So I'm going to grab my dark colour here, and I'm going to start by chaining nine. Just like that. So this first piece is worked as a flat piece, which means we're working in rows backwards and forwards. So that final chain is our turning chain. So skipping that one there, we're going to work back through these chains, eight single crochet. So there we go. Then we're going to chain one and turn and work back into the stitches we just did. We're going to work eight single crochet back across. So, chain one and turn, and then do the same thing again. Then I'm just going to finish off. Now I know this piece doesn't look like much of anything, but just pop it to one side for now, you'll see what we're going to do with it in a minute. So now we're going to start making our actual skull. So the way this piece is constructed, you may not be able to tell just by looking at it, but we're actually going to start by making this middle band. So it starts here under the teeth and it's just a long flat band. It gets wider at the top of the head and it wraps all the way around to the front where we build out the face. So that's the piece that we're going to be making now. So. Grabbing the colour I want to use for my skull, I'm going to start by chaining five. Like so. Then turning to work into those chains and starting in the second chain from our hook, I'm going to work four single crochet back across. Like so. Chain one and turn. So we're going to repeat that row of four single crochet and then chaining one and turning 15 times in total. Now we want to broaden our strip out to form the top of the forehead. So in order to do that, we're going to work a single crochet, two increases, and then a single crochet. 
if you count that should leave you with six stitches in your row so then chain one and turn and now we're going to work 11 rows of six single crochet backwards and forwards chaining one and turning at the end of each row Okay, so this is what it currently looks like. Like I said, this is a trust the process pattern. So next, what we're going to do is build up the rings for the eyes. So you can get kind of an idea of what that looks like here. So these are two chain loops attached in the next row. So we've already chained one in turn and I'm gonna work a single crochet into the first stitch. I'm then going to chain five. So, skip the next stitch and then work two single crochet. So one and two. Now those two should fall into the two middle stitches of the row. So there's our first eye loop. I'm then going to chain five again. So skip that stitch and single crochet into the last stitch in the row. So that is what your piece should currently look like. Chain one and turn. And in this row, we're going to add the little opening for the nose. So I'm going to start by working over the top of the chains, not into them, over the top, four single crochet. So I would do those just by inserting my hook around the chain loop, pulling up my yarn and finishing the stitch. So note that I have clustered those on the outer edge of the loop and that we still have a couple of chains left free and uncovered in the middle. I'm then going to chain three and basically we're going to skip this little V section and it's going to form the bridge of the nose and we're going to insert our hook into the middle of the chain loop on the other side and work our first single crochet just to make that little bridge. I'm then going to work three more up the outer edge of that chain loop from last round. So all in all in that round you've worked four single crochet up the edge of this loop You've chained three across the middle of the nose, and then you've worked four single crochet up the outer edge of the second eye loop. Chain one and turn. So in this row, we're going to work first in the four single crochet of, that make up that eye loop, and we're going to start with a decrease, and then two single crochet, which should bring you to your chain across the middle of the nose. And all you're going to do is work two single crochet over the top of that chain, like so. And then you're going to work into the four single crochet along the second eye loop. So that starts with two single crochet. And then in the last two stitches, work a decrease. Chain one and turn. So that is what your piece currently looks like. So now we just need to sort of narrow it down and build out his little teeth. So in order to do that, we're gonna start with a decrease, four single crochet, and then a decrease, chain one and turn. You may notice uh, that your skull is starting to like not sit flat anymore that's fine that's correct decrease two single crochet and a decrease chain one and turn so you see we've narrowed it down to four stitches along the top there so now we are going to be adding his little teeth so this is one of my favorite little design details to do and that is to work a triple crochet in the front loop and then slip stitch into the back loop of the same stitch. And what that does is it gives you this little folded over detail. So for those of you who don't know, triple crochet is when you yarn over your hook twice. I'm gonna insert my hook through the front loop only of the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So I've got four loops on my hook in total. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through the first two yarn over and pull through the second two leaving me with just two on the hook so yarn over and pull through those so that is what that currently looks like i'm then going to fold it forward so towards me find the back loop of that same stitch which is this one here i'm just going to slip stitch into it 
And what that does is it locks that stitch down into this little folded over position. And I'm going to do that in the next three stitches as well. Now, from my frog video, I understand that sometimes this stitch can be a little hard to manage, particularly if you're not used to doing triple crochets. Uh, my advice in that scenario is if you really can't make the triple crochets work, try a double crochet. You'll get smaller teeth, but you'll still get the same sort of effect. So there's three. Got one more to go. Okay, so now that we have this little strip with our skull face on one side, what we need to do is work around the edge of the piece. So the first step of that is to work three single crochet up this edge until you meet the end of the eye. So I'm putting one here, two, and then three. So it's three single crochet. My next stitch is going to go into the side of the eye socket, like so. And then I'm going to be working 27 single crochet up this edge until I reach this corner. Now, because we've been working in nice even rows, where to put those stitches should be fairly easy to spot. That's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And 27. So you see that that brings us right up to the end there. That's current appearance. I'm then going to turn and we're going to be working across the four starting chains. In that first one, the corner, we're putting an increase. That's just going to help our edge turn the corner nicely, just like so. You may want to mark the first stitch you worked in that increase just because it is going to be relevant to assembly later. I found that it's actually really easy to identify either way though. So you don't need to mark it if you don't have any markers on hand. And then going to work two single crochet across the middle, bringing us to the other corner. And we're going to work an increase in that as well. Now, just like the first one, if you are somebody who likes to mark the stitches that are relevant, mark the second stitch in that increase. So basically there is an increase on each corner and you'd mark the outer stitch in them. So now we've done that, I'm going to be working 27 single crochet down this edge, back down to the top of the eye socket. Twenty-seven. So there we are, are back at the top of the eyelid. Your next stitch is going to go into the eye socket just like we did on the other side and then you're going to work three single crochet down towards the teeth so one two and three and we are not going to finish off so this is what the piece currently looks like so you've got your skull face on one end which will bubble out slightly and then you've got sort of this long tab that's narrower on one end and then wider as we move into the face so how the assembly of this is going to work, is we're going to roll this around so that that's the front of your skull. And then we're, we're going to continue on from where we are here, close off one side and then reattach and close off the other until you have a fully enclosed little 3D skull. But before we do that, we're going to grab that little panel that we made at the start and we are going to sew it in place across the eyes. And that is so they show up the way you want them to on the front. So with my work flipped over and you'll be able to tell because the teeth will stick out more on one side, that is the inside of your work. So we're looking at the inside now. I'm gonna grab my little flat panel piece and I'm going to line it up with the edge next to the eye and nose. And I am gonna pin it in place. Now you do need to be mindful of the fact that this piece is going to be pressed outwards in a curve so when we're sewing this on, we need to allow room for that curve to happen. So note that before I pin the other side on, it actually sticks out the edge. So we've made it this wide on purpose. Instead, I'm going to just push it in, allowing it to curve with the shape of the face. And so that that edge lies on the inside of those outer edge stitches <laughs> and pin that there as well. So the idea is that you need to make sure that 
the eyes and the nose are fully covered. And you should be able to see there that that piece is curling with the work. So at this point, what you're going to do is grab your needle and thread it with some of your outside color. So the color that your skull is, not the color that the eye sockets are. And we're going to sew around the whole edge. Now, as you do this, be careful to not sew through these loops. We're going to need those to assemble the skull. So make sure that you're only inserting your needle through the main stitches. I had thought about making this a no sew pattern. All it would require is for me to make like a whole ball that goes on the inside instead of just this little panel. But part of me has never been able to grow out of the don't waste yarn <laughs> mentality. So to me, that would be a whole lot of yarn that you don't see and thus wasted. I do need to sort of try and be better about having a more plentiful mindset, but in the meantime, I'm trying my best not to use up any yarn that I don't have to. And you'll note that I'm only inserting my needle through the gaps in the stitches. That is because I don't really want this to show up on the outside and that is how you get the more invisible stitching. Now the pattern for this little patch does assume that your two pieces are the Now the pattern for this little patch does assume that your two yarns are the same weight and that they work up the same size when swatched. So if you're using the same size yarn but from two different brands even you may end up with a patch that is too small to fit into this little gap. And if that's the case, you should add an additional row. So instead of doing three rows of eight single crochet, you would do four instead. You can even make that piece after you've already stitched up this main column of skull. And that way you can be sure that you've got something just the right size. So I'm finishing off on the inside and just securing the end there. Now, if you don't want to do any other sewing this project, you don't have to. There is one other little optional bit under the teeth, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. So you'll note as I've sewn that on, I have not interfered with those outer stitches. <laughs> These ones are close, but they are, they are not interfering with those loops. So be very mindful of that as you do yours. Okay, so now we're going to continue on where we left off and it is time to start forming the actual skull shape. So as mentioned, we've made the strip that goes all the way down and around the middle. And now we're going to close in on our first side. So how you do that is you're going to grab the tail of your column and you're going to fold it all the way around. So note that it's not twisted or anything. It's just rolled up. You're going to find that little increase that was on the corner and identify the outside stitch of it. So the stitch closer to the long end instead of closer to the short end. And that is the first stitch we are going to work into. And you're going to start by just working a single crochet into that stitch like so and there is your new round so from here on out i'm going to be working this piece as a continuous spiral so for the rest of this row i'm going to work six repeats of three single crochet and then a decrease So that should leave you with one more stitch to work in the row and you're just going to put a single crochet into that. So that's how that currently looks. You'll note that we've closed in this opening slightly. Underneath we've got our flat edge lining up with the bottom of our teeth but it's kind of just hinging on this one little stitch for now. And your other side is completely open. So in the next round we're going to start by single crocheting three together. So I do that using like an invisible decrease adaptation. So that means that I'm just going to pick up the front loops of the next three stitches on my hook all at the same time. Yarn over and pull through all three of them. So leaving me with two loops on my hook and then yarn over and finish that stitch. You can also do the more standard uh, insert your hook into the stitch and pull up a loop for each of them and then complete it that way as well. I'm then going to work a single crochet. Like that and then seven repeats of a single crochet and then a decrease. like so and then work a single crochet into that final stitch again so there currently is 17 stitches left in your round 
So we have two more rows to work to finish off this side of the skull. So they are two single crochet. And then five repeats of a single crochet and then a decrease. Like so. Which should leave you with 12 stitches around. And then in the final row, I'm just going to work six decreases. Now I am using invisible decreases the whole way along. I feel like it gives you a flatter, nicer finish. And given that there are so many decreases in this particular pattern, I think that that's a really important thing to note. But if any of you out there prefer to use regular decreases, um, let me know how it goes. Let me know if it looks okay. I'd love to, I'd love to see that. So with six stitches left in the round, I'm going to finish this off. Now you'll note that we've left kind of a little ear hole there. Well, we don't want that. And so I'm going to take this tail and in the front loops only of the remaining stitches, I'm going to weave it through. So, and then give it a little pull. That opening is gone. So side note for anybody trying to make this in a bulky yarn or a super bulky yarn, you might want to nix that final row, like don't work it, leave yourself with a 12 stitch opening and then just do that same weaving trick around the final 12 stitches. I found bulky yarn doesn't need to go down as small as the thin yarn. So your skull is currently a half complete and so now you'll have an idea of what it's going to look like. So we've got rounded top in the front and we've got this little mess to try and deal with. <laughs> So I'm grabbing my skull color again, just attaching to my hook with a slip knot, and we need to reattach. So what you need to do is go to the back of your little row, so not the head end, the back end, find that corner and identify that little increase that we did, and find the outer facing stitch, which is this one here. Now what you will note is that you will have four stitches along that short end, and then you'll be in your increase on the outer corner. And I'm going to start by working a single crochet into that stitch. So the net, we are trying to form our new round on this side. So I'm going to fold the face forward and you'll be able to identify the last tooth you did really easily. What you need to do is find the single crochet after that tooth. And it should mean that there are 32 stitches in total in this round. So if you need help, you can always count backwards from your hook until you reach the 32nd stitch. And from there, I am just going to work up the rows the same as we did last time. Now keep in mind that the stitches are in a slightly different order because we are working in the reverse direction, but otherwise work it up the exact same way. Sinking audio. So there is the other side. Now you may have noticed that we haven't stuffed yet and you might be feeling a little bit concerned about that. But I just want to remind you that we haven't closed off this little opening underneath the teeth. And it's through that opening that I'm going to stuff mine now. Basically just stuff him until he is full. Like so. So at this point, all we need to do is sew up this little opening underneath. Now, if it's just for me, I would just not work worry about it but uh just because i think this would be really good for some of the halloween market stalls coming up absolutely sew it shut if you're selling them so there we go so we should have four stitches for our teeth and four stitches underneath from where that little flat end of the flat bit was and you're basically just going to match those stitches up so i'm not talking about the slip stitches that we did on the teeth rows i'm just talking about the triple crochets if you match those stitches up and just sew through them. That said, even if you don't match them up super nicely, this is hidden under the teeth. You won't see it from the outside of the piece. So you don't need to be too precious about it. And there is your finished skull.
And there is your finished skull. Now, I hope you had fun making these with me today. You may have noticed a little bit of a shift in the editing. I thought it might be interesting to show a bit more of the transition between the different shots that I do so you can get a better feel for what my filming process is like, particularly as this is such a short project. I had a little bit more time to play around with the editing. I do feel like over the next few months I'll potentially be adding bones to this guy and right, maybe we'll have the full skeleton by Halloween. So let me know in the comments if you're interested in seeing that. But other than that, I will see you next week. Okay, bye!